Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass and welcome to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I should really be wearing my uh, Nazi Goreng t-shirt but it's buried at the bottom of my bag and trust me, you don't want to go in there. Um, anyway, we are here for just about 36 hours. It's, it's essentially a stopover on our way from Singapore to Hong Kong. However, I'm determined to try and fit in as much as possible whilst I'm here and experience a bit of Malaysian culture and Malaysian car culture. It's fair to say people have made a big deal about the food in Kuala Lumpur before we flat got white. here. Oh, there we go, flat white, thank you very much. Before we got here, everyone kept saying that you're gonna eat incredible food. And what I'll say is that you do have to do your research, but in general, everywhere we've gone, whether it's a little cafe or a full-on restaurant, the food has been pretty spot on. We even tried Nazi, oh, what was the? Nazi Lamak yesterday, which is a little bit similar to Nazi Champur in Bali or Indonesia. It was good, it was really good. And then look at this, almond milk flat white coffee, winning. Now, as much as I'd like to make this channel about coffee and travel, I'm going to keep it predominantly about cars. So, I've come down this morning to cars and coffee. Not cars and coffee, because I believe here in Malaysia, coffee is coffee. That's how you say coffee in Malaysia. Malay? Malaysian. And it's very different to the cars and coffee we get in Europe. Instead of a supercar breakfast meat, this is very much a sort of local modified car meat. There's drifting, there's Jim Carner, there's a rev battle, we've got modified Mustangs, Evos, GTRs, the lot. But I think it gives a more authentic insight into the sort of local car culture, or maybe the more affordable local car culture, because supercars are for the few anywhere in the world. But here I feel like people really pride themselves on modified cars. So we're gonna have a quick spin around, see what's going on, try and learn a bit more about what's happening and maybe catch some of the drifting in Jim Carner before we gotta head off. This was your late father's car? Yeah, it was, it was me and my late father's uh, project car. Uh, started to build like 2016. It took about two years to finish. Uh, most of the parts, we, we took it from a scrap from the UK and brought it back. So we built the whole back, the axle and everything. It's running on a 13 inch wheel, so it's pretty, pretty big because my dad. He wants it a bit showy. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. that's the thing. It looks like an amazing yeah. show car, I have to say. Yeah, it's a show I car. love all these wooden yeah, struts here. Th th this, this was the main inspiration for the build. He wanted, he said, Oh, I want a pickup. I wanted a wooden rail on it to make it look like a lorry. <laughs> it's so, so cool. Yeah. And you drive it around just for events yeah, like this? I, I, no, I actually, I actually use this for my detailing. Me and my friend, we, we run a mobile detailing business. Oh, nice. And this is your work horse? Yeah, this is basically our work car. Oh so, God. Mojo Detailers. Mojo Detailers Kuala Lumpur, right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, look, you got an amazing. Amazing work car, yeah. so I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Proof is in the pudding. I just yeah. found the main man <laughs> who seems to be the king of cars and coffee. I guess you could say that. <laughs> you were just explaining like this is the first time you've done something like this in KL or in Malaysia? Yeah, in um, actually I got the inspiration from um, cars and coffee of course. And uh, this is our first time trying it out here in Malaysia. But um, Kopi stands for coffee in Malay. Uh, some of you will know that already. So this is by Motorbreed. Um, it's not a car club exactly, it's like a platform for locals to share everything and uh, anything at all uh, car related. So Cars and Kopi is just to bring no matter what you drive, you can be driving a, a Myvi. That's our local, that's our local supercar by the way. That's our local supercar. Yeah. So you can be driving a Myvi or you can be driving a I don't know, a Mustang, a GTR. What's the, like, so what's the popular, so my view is this one here, the, the little hatchback? Yeah, you, you'll find this about like, Every single household will have a MyV. Okay. Even if you're driving a Lambo, you'll have a MyV to move around <laughs> KL. You know? The next one would be in probably in three months. We plan to do this every uh, three months once. Nice. Yeah. So hope to see you there on the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be flying <laughs> back mid-trip. Anyway, nice to meet you. Nice Thank you, you so man. much. Take Cheers, care. Bro. See you, bro. Well, 
what I've done is I've... Not. Yeah, I think the rev battle's about to begin, so... <laughs> what I've done is I've done a stage 2 on the car. So it's running about 330 horse. Wow. And I've changed the brakes to the PPRS brakes. Whoa. It's the Audi ones, but I spread it to Brembo's because, you know, I don't like the RS on the R. It looks kind of okay. funny. <laughs> sure, I okay, fine. That. So you have the Brembo's. I changed the uh, hood and fenders to carbon. That's the full aspect body kit. The red one. So I converted to the aspect uh, aftermarket hood sure. and fenders. I added the canards and the front lips, changed the front grille, intake as well. Congrats, mate. Thanks, 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 thanks. <laughs> Tissue me. Tissue me. Oh, anyone that saw my last video from Singapore will know I was complaining about the heat there, but oh, Malaysia's just won in the battle of melting Sam in every single video. Anyway, super glad I came and stopped by here um, because I didn't think I was going to have time, but we made time and it was well worth it because. You know, don't get me wrong, I love checking out supercars, and in fact, that's what we're about to go and do. But you can find supercars all over the world, so it's nice sometimes to get out and see a bit more of the local scene. And you know, here there are locally modified cars, project cars. Oh, so we've got someone coming over. Yeah, I think it's helping me. Yeah, of course, but I never at all. See you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. I literally paid that guy to come over and do it, so it made it look like I was far more of a big deal in Malaysia than I actually am. Um, but yes, you know, getting to understand a bit more about the local scene, whether that's modified classic minis, uh, that Golf R, which I just fell in love with, to uh, the Protons and the, uh, the Maze, Maze, Maze. I need to learn a bit more clearly. But anyway, uh, having said that you can find supercars all over the world, uh, we're now gonna go and do some supercar content. So yesterday, um, as we landed from the airport, we got met by a whole lot of Lamborghinis. Uh, went on a bit of a tour around some of the sort of local sightseeing areas, and then went to visit uh, a big collection, the JP... JP? M. M, M collection. Uh, I wasn't strictly allowed to film in there, uh, but I did, I did take a load of photos. So uh, as we drive this Range Rover, which I hadn't even mentioned about, this loner Range Rover, back to the dealership that lent it to us, uh, I'll show you all of that B-roll from yesterday, uh, and then you'll join us, uh, yes, at uh, Bespoke um, in, in KL. So that was yesterday, but you now join me at Bespoke Motoring, who are the legends that lent me this Range Rover Beast to explore in for the last uh, 24 hours. But they are one of the top car dealerships in this whole area. And when you see the kind of cars that they have in stock, you are going to be blown away. But I'm going to start off outside because outside is already impressive. I mean, there's two 720s just lurking over there, but I'm going to bring you this way because there are two 4x4 beasts that I'm obsessed with. Um, firstly, check out this Toyota Land Cruiser in classic iconic spec with the, the canvas roof and I mean these things are so freaking cool. Becoming quite the collectible item now but just tucked away. I'm not sure if it's been restored or if that's original but looking immaculate. And then over here we have an Overland, well it's a Defender, it's an Overland Defender but it's got a, a Bola Motorsport stick on it so maybe it's had some extra tuning but what an absolutely stunning spec in that red. I love a pickup Defender. I mean, that's almost the, the pick of the bunch so far out here. <laughs> now inside, I'm actually doing things a little bit back to front. You join me at the sort of back end of the dealership, and that's because the sort of showpiece of this place is at the front, and I want to save that for the end of this video. You've probably already guessed what it is because of the title. But anyway, let's just touch on a few of the special things that are hiding back here, because of course, a challenge to Dali. I'm always going to start any dealership tour with a challenge to Dali if they have one because you all know it's my bay. Um, beautiful spec here, the classic red with stripe. This one has a radio and long-term viewers will know that I actually would not have a radio in my challenge to Dali because all the sound you need comes from that engine and that exhaust. There are also some very special Porsches in here. You might be able to see just in front a 997 GT2 RS. 
a beautiful spec on that car, sort of dark blue. I've never seen a GT2 RS like that, but that car is super collectible. And actually, I was asking the guys down here at Bespoke, what's the sort of modern classic market like in KL? And they're saying it's nowhere near the madness that the UK modern classic market is. So that car, once converted into pounds, is something like 500,000? I'm pretty sure in the UK, a GT2 RS in that spec would go for a lot more. Correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway, great to see. Also a very nice 997.2 GT3 RS. Uh, in that corner, SLR. We've got a uh, 16M just chilling here, and it's kind of like satin grey. And next to it, a very interesting Speciale Aperta. It might look like it's black with gold stripes, but it's actually a highly bespoke, tailor-made car. And that paint is kind of like almost like a dark brown. It's a bit weird. You notice it every now and again as you sort of move around the car. It's also got a lot of hand-painted gold elements in the interior, about seven different colours of Alcantara. But yeah, super bespoke, super unusual. Uh, a few bikes lurking around for those of you that really love your bikes. I don't know a lot about bikes, so there they are. Uh, anyway, let's move on to some of the other rooms. We've come through to the final room now, and yes, there is the big showpiece that I've been kind of hinting towards, but let's just touch on what else is in here. We've got a very nice white Avent Aventador SV with some red details, and on the left, a GT3 Cup car, once again in the pink pig livery. I think we're going to see quite a lot of this as we continue to move through Asia, but this one seems to have a slightly naughtier sticker on the back, but anyway, still super cool to see. Um, and then we've got an M3 GTS, so having just driven one of these in Singapore, talking about how rare it is. Here is another right-hand drive M3 GTS. We just saw the M4 next door, but yeah, very cool to see, but qu quite random considering that I banged on about, you're never going to see one of these again. Well, here's one straight away, but talking about rare cars, here we go. Let's move on to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gambala Mirage GT. I actually don't remember the last time I saw one of these in the flesh. They're, uh, quite a long time ago, a couple used to smoke around London, but these are insanely rare. Once again, one of 25 that is one of 25 right hand drive this is one of 25 ever obviously based on the Porsche Carrera GT but highly modified in almost every way you can imagine now lots of Porsche sort of purists I think are going to think this is a complete horror show but I think it's kind of got to be celebrated for what it is. You can see body changed all over, bonnet's got this kind of big scoop in it, different front bumper, we've got an actual carbon roof scoop up there, um, different rear wing, you can see the sort of Gambala uh, branding on the engine, uh, we've got more carbon fiber all on that kind of roof snorkel. Round the back, and we're going to really focus on this in a second, instead of the usual dual tips we've got quad tips because one of the sort of biggest highlights of this car is the way it sounds. Um, now they didn't just literally just do the sort of aerodynamic visual changes, they changed the suspension, uh, the wheels were all to do with sort of cooling, uh, the actual engine itself was modified, they upped the horsepower and the torque because of course that was needed in the Carrera GT, I think it's up to like 670 or something like that out of that motorsport V10, um, but yes in every way sort of I guess you could say optimised but again Porsche purists will tell me that Porsche themselves did the best optimization of this car, but you know, I think it's a bit of fun, a bit wacky, and just super unique and different. Extremely expensive, this car. I think now, if Gembala would allow you to commission a new Carrera GT, they'd be charging you a couple of hundred thousand pounds for the upgrade, but officially, I don't think they're making them anymore. It was just limited to the 25. But as I hinted at before, this car for me is all about the sound, and the guys here have very kindly said they're going to start it up and let us hear it and so uh, yeah Paul Wallace I know you're going to be watching uh, this is for you this is the exhaust expert on the Mirage GT We can all agree that is absolutely insane. My ears are still ringing. Can you imagine following that thing up a sort of alpine road? Oh, it's getting a bit, a bit dark in here. I haven't positioned that camera very well. There we go. I'll squiggle around. But yes, this place has been an absolute gem in KL. My time in KL. 
it's one of those dealerships which, like so many in the world, is sort of more than just somewhere buying and selling cars. It's got a, an essence about it, a feel about it, somewhere that you want to come and just hang out. Everything is beautifully presented. And the range of cars they have in here, from that Land Cruiser out front to M4, M3 GTSs, and of course, GT2 RSs and Challenge Stradales, right through to the Mirage GT, is pretty immense. But anyway, that calls a, a, an end to our time here. It's time to head towards the airport and get ready for our trip over to Hong Kong and I'm just going to whip around and get a few more photos before we leave here because I'm going to want to remember some of these cars. been an insanely busy 36 hours here in Malaysia. Uh, one of the shortest stops we're doing, I think maybe Shanghai is equally as quick, but still well worth it because I think as you've seen in this video, there is a ton going on here and definitely a vibing car scene. I'm still quite blown away that we stumbled across that Gambala Mirage GT. Uh, but anyway, we're now hanging out in the lounge here at KL. IA. Um, got a few hours. Our, our flight has been like delayed by an hour, I think, as I mentioned. So, uh, actually, got a couple more hours uh, to chill, but it means I can get some editing done before we jump on our flight over to Hong Kong, where we're going to be spending six days, five, five, six days. And I have so much stuff lined up, uh, it's going to be quite exhausting, but I, I, I can't wait. Um, it's one of the places that I've been most excited about visiting for the whole of Drive the World. So, uh, yes, I'm going to order up some more satay and keep back and relax.